Show. Starring Roy Rogers, King of the Cowboys, Trigger, his golden palomino, and Dale Evans, Queen of the West. With Pat Brady, his comical sidekick, and Roy's wonder dog, Bullet. Besides, you're liable to get arrested for reckless driving. Well, of all the cotton picking things, you did the same thing when you were a kid. Let's go and see what's going on in that schoolhouse. Yeah. Hey, take it easy. What's going on here, Jack? I've been trying to control the class, but they won't pay any attention to me. Well, where's your teacher, Mr. Everett? Someone came for me, left in a hurry. He said he'd be back. He said for us to study our lessons while he was gone. What were you studying? How to pitch curves? Could you tell me who came after Mr. Everett? Some man I never saw before. Well, where's his son, Joey? I don't know. He didn't even come in today. Pat, you better stay here and see that the kids do their lesson. I'll check and see why Tom left in such a hurry. I'll handle the kids, Roy. You know me. When it comes to discipline, they ain't nobody better. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All you kids just keep simmered down and study hard. Anything you don't understand in them school books, you just ask me. What's square root of 81, Mr. Brady? Square root of 81. I think somebody's pulling my leg. There ain't no square roots. Only round ones. <laughs> Tom? Hi, Roy. Say, pardon me, I gotta get back to the school. Well, Pat's taking care of it. Anything wrong? Yeah, you know my son, Joey. He's sick. He's got a cold. Helen got excited, so she thought he was taking a turn for the worse and sent for me. Well, how is the boy? Oh, you know my wife. Like all women, she worries too much. Joy's gonna be okay. Didn't you call the doctor? No, when I got home, I found out it wasn't necessary. Tom, would you tell me who brought you Helen's message? Uh, one of the neighbors. Say, Roy, I gotta get back to school. I guess you'd better before the pupils start imitating Pat's grammar. <laughs> well, they could do worse. Pat's the salt of the earth. Yes, I know, but uh, what he doesn't know about education would fill the biggest library you ever saw. <laughs> <laughs> I'll ride back to town with you. Good. But did that bother old Daniel Boone? <laughs> no, not he. He just unslung his trusty rifle and took careful aim. Oh, hi, Tom, Roy. I was just giving the class a history lesson. Well, might as well mark it off the blackboard. <laughs> sure. Yes, sir, uh, me and the students went through geography, science, fractions, and history. <laughs> You made a fine substitute teacher, Pat. Thank you, Tom. Anytime, anytime at all. <laughs> Pat, you'd better get back to the restaurant. I'll go to the store and meet Dale. Okay, Roy, but I hope you know what you're doing to me, demoting me from a school teacher to a fry cook. Yeah, I can see you'd make a real good teacher. <laughs> What in the world's going on here? I finally went into business for myself. I'm going to be a ventril, uh, a ventril. Ventriloquist? That's right. How are you going to be it when you can't even say it? <laughs> it tells me all I got to know right here in this book, and it only cost me $10. Cash? Yes. Oh, Pat. He'll never learn. What's bothering you? I keep wondering about Tom Everett. What about him? 
You know, Dale, I think he lied to me today. Oh, Roy, you don't really think Tom would lie to you? Well, when I asked his pupils who came for him, they said a man they didn't know. Yet when I asked Tom who came for him, he said his wife sent one of the neighbors. Now, Dale, you know those children know everybody in this neighborhood. Seems like they would. Well, something's up. Something's wrong. And I don't think it's because his son Joey had a cold like he says. Maybe it's something personal, something Tom doesn't want to talk about. Well, he never struck me as having anything to hide. And it isn't like him to run off and leave his pupils like that. But if Joey is sick... I think we'd better go out there tomorrow and find out how sick he really is. Here's some hot coffee. I don't think I have time for a coffee. Incidentally, where's my brother Steve? Still sleeping, I guess. How long will he be here? I don't know. I wish he'd leave tomorrow. Well, he's your older brother and head of the family, but I... I know, I know. He worries me, too. I never was at ease with him. But we're the only family he has, so we might as well put up with him for a while. Joey's crazy about him already. He told him some tall tales last night. Yeah, time. that's the trouble. See, Steve's got a lot of charm when he wants to turn it on. It's all the wrong kind. Well, leave Joey in bed today. He should be able to get up tomorrow. Ah! Morning. Hello, Steve. I didn't know you were up. Where you been? Oh, just uh, looking over the property. Thought I'd work up an appetite. Where's my nephew? In bed. I'll fix you some breakfast. <laughs> you know, Tom, sometimes I get the idea that wife of yours don't like me at all. Uh, all right, I have to get off to school. Hey, Tom, don't forget what I said. Uh, we don't want to let on to anybody that I'm here. Well, I still don't understand why, because... Hey, that's my business. Look, I'll be pulling out for long. Meantime, I, I want privacy and lots of it. You understand that, don't you? Yeah. I, uh, think I'm looking on Joey. Good morning, Uncle Steve. Why, morning, Joey. Say, how's my boy? I feel a little better. I don't think Mom ought to keep me in bed. Ah, none of that kind of talk. Now, you do what your Ma tells you. <laughs> At least it keeps you out of school, Gloria. Right? You know, I bet that's half your sickness. No, it isn't, Uncle Steve. I don't like to fall behind in my lessons. Well, with your old Pa being a teacher, I, I don't see she's got much to worry about. I don't know. Dad is awful strict and doesn't show any favors, especially to me. Yeah. Yeah, he's always been like that. Tell you what, Joy. Why don't we forget that sort of thing, and as soon as I have my breakfast, we'll sit down to a rip-roaring game of checkers, huh? That would be swell. Your breakfast's on, Steve. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. See you later, kid. Why can't I get up, Mom? You're staying in bed until tomorrow. I'll bring you in your breakfast. All right. <laughs> Rogers and Dale Evans, why? I don't want him to know I'm here. Look, I'm going back in Joey's room. You uh, don't let on. Hello, Dale. Roy, come on in. Hi. Hello, Helen. Looks like we interrupted your breakfast. No, no, I, I just finished. Did you have some coffee? I just made some. Sit down. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Here, let me get this out of the way. He's fine. He'll be out of bed tomorrow. Good. Uh, looks like Bullet wants to go in and visit him. I don't think that's a good idea. Oh? Well, Bullet, get away from the door, then. <laughs> Bullet loves kids. Helen, there isn't anything wrong here, is there? Well, what do you mean? This wasn't your breakfast, was it? Of course it was my breakfast. Well, I guess we'd better be running along. Thanks for the coffee. 
You know, Helen, we like you and Tom. We'd do anything in the world to help. So if you need help, just holler. Thanks. anybody to know that I'm around here, but uh, we're going to keep it a secret between you and me, huh? Sure, Uncle Steve. You can eat your breakfast now. Hey, I got it. Now, just listen to this. How you feeling today, Cubby? Never felt better in a month of Sunday. Oh, Pat, you're not throwing your voice any further than you can throw an elephant. What? What are you doing playing with that doll? Oh, now, Roy, what's the matter with you? The Everett family. We just saw Helen, and I think there's somebody hiding in their house. They're in trouble, and they won't let us help them. Well, things like that come out sooner or later. Well, that's it. It might be too late. I need your help. What's up, Sheriff? The stage was held up below Boulder Point, and Jimmy the driver was killed. The outlaw got away with the Wells Fargo strong box and the passengers' money and valuables. He struck out for the hills. Maybe we can use Bullet to pick up his trail. Hey, how about me? Nellie Bell would never make it. Besides, Dale needs you here. Clears it out, Sheriff. Let's see if we can pick up his trail. All right. Hey. 
What are you doing out of bed? I got tired of lying in bed like a sissy. I'm all right. Uh, where's your ma? Took a buggy into town to get some groceries. Said she might ride home with Dad after school. Yeah, so you're taking advantage, huh? Well, I got a good idea for you. Why don't you trot back in the bedroom and you and me will play another game of checkers, huh? Okay. Go on. Take a look inside. Well, there's one of Tom Everett's saddles. Yeah. Well, but the initials on it are S.E. S.E.? Who's that? I don't know. But I think we'd better go to the house and find out. Come on, Bullet. It wasn't very smart, Joey. I sacrificed one man so I could get... Oh, yeah? What's this? Now, ain't I a lop eared dodo head? Who is it, Uncle Steve? It's Roy Rogers and the Sheriff's Posse. Joy, let's set up this board for a brand new game. Hmm? And remember what I told you. I've been here all afternoon playing checkers with you. If anybody asks what time I got here, it was this morning, right after breakfast, okay? It's Uncle Steve. Suppose they ask Mom and Dad. Uh, they won't. Now, you just remember one thing. Your Uncle Steve's dependent on you. But that's Roy Rogers and the Sheriff. That's the law. Well, I know, Joy, but sometimes the law makes mistakes. Now, you just settle down and play another game. Here. Now, go ahead and jump my man. Go on. Anybody home? Answer. Right here. Hi, Joy. Who's your company? My Uncle Steve, meet the Sheriff and Roy Rogers. Uh, howdy, Rogers. You do. Howdy. Sheriff, mighty glad you boys dropped in. I've been taking a shellacking from my nephew here. Been playing checkers while Helen's out to market. Is that your saddle out there in the barn? Uh, yeah. My horse in the corral. Why, anything wrong with that? Well, there wouldn't be, only there was a holdup down the road and a man was killed. Killed? Oh, that's a shame. Say, why don't I join the posse and lend a hand? How long have you been here? See, I got here this morning, right after breakfast. Uh, been keeping the boy company ever since. You see, he's been sick. Has your uncle been here like he said, Joey? That's right. He got here after breakfast. I was here after breakfast. He wasn't here then. Oh, uh, he came after you left. How did you know when I left? I thought you were asleep. Uh, I could hear bullets scratching at the door. Could you hear bullets scratching, too? Look, I don't know who Bullet is, and I don't know what you're talking about, but if you don't want to take my word or the boys, why don't you wait for Helen? She'll tell you the same thing. Well, it looks like he's got a pretty good alibi, Roy. Let's get going. All right, Sheriff. Bullet does follow the wrong trail once in a while. I guess I'll have to take him back home and give him a good talking to. So long, Joey. Be seeing you. What's this about Bullet making a mistake? Well, it hasn't happened yet, Sheriff. Only I don't think we're going to get anywhere this way. You and the boys better ride on back to town. What about you? Bullet and I are going to see if we can break Uncle Steve's alibi. you go ahead and do it, but uh, be sure you stay in the house, huh? Yeah, that's how it is, Joey. Sometimes a, a man and a law just don't see eye to eye. No, it ain't that the man's an outlaw or anything like that. It, it's just if you follow the strict letter of the law, you ain't a man at all. You're more of a, a well, like you say, a sissy. But everybody's supposed to respect the law. Sure, sure, but 
You take a real red-blooded, high-living fellow like myself, well, he's bound to run afoul of the law once in a while. Uh, nothing serious, mind you, but enough to make him want to lie low till it blows over, you understand? Uh, I guess so. Hey, look, Uncle Steve. After. Well, he, uh, he's snooping on private property, too. Now, Joey, there's your law for you. What right does Rogers have going in your pa's barn without permission? I'm going to take care of him, yeah. Is there a gun in the house? Dad keeps a gun in his desk. But you're not going to shoot Mr. Rogers, are you? No. No, I I'm just going to teach him a lesson. Something good. Stand up real slow, Rogers. Keep your hands higher and turn around. They couldn't mind your own business, huh? You had to come back and snoop. Take a good look, because you're not going to leave this bar. Take your uncle's side. He's a murderer. Don't listen to him, Joy. Look, I am your uncle. You can't turn me in. Uncle or not, you have to uphold the law. No, Joey. No, you just hold Rogers here. Keep him covered. Huh? Keep him covered until I can saddle my horse and get away. You're not running away, Uncle Steve, are you? Sure he is. He's a card. Like all outlaws when they're cornered. Drop the gun, Joey. Rotten little renegade. Turn it on your own flesh and blood. You got a lot of your pa's blood in you. You're nothing but a sniveling, much hearted sissy. I'm proud to have my father's blood in me. Good boy, Joey. You just learned a lesson you'll never forget. Outside. Bullet, keep an eye on that strong box. I'm going to put your brother in that bug in. I want you to drive him down to the sheriff's office. I'm glad it's all over, Roy. Well, if you'd have told me about it sooner, I might have... I know. Maybe Steve wouldn't have held up the coach and the driver would be alive today. That's right. But at least Joey here found out that there's a the wrong kind of hero worship. And that his father, the school teacher, is a much better man than his uncle, the outlaw. Get in the buggy. Watch him, Tom. I'll gather up the loot and follow you on trigger. Quiet, quiet, quiet. <laughs> Now, throwing your voice is a real ancient art. And you gotta be born with a lip for it. Like me. This ought to be good. Now, watch this. How old are you, son? Ah, oh, button your lip. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. I did it. Or did I? <laughs> Happy trails to you Until we meet again Happy 
happy trail to you. Keep smiling until then. Happy trails to you.